So friends, we are here with Jimmy, and we're about to go in the Country Music Hall of Fame award ceremony for his father. I am 12 old. Still alive. 81, and I'm still working. It's awesome. I hope I make it to you. You know what? I've been working here nine years now. Where's Jimmy? Where the ceremony will happen. We meet like at a McDonald's or something every morning or every two mornings and we just shoot the ball over now. I just keep it. So we're here with Jimmy Snow to honor his father today. We've got the Country Music Hall of Fame and another honoree is Minnie Pearl and Owen Bradley. And a few more. And there's Elvis. Another honoree is Pee Wee King, Kitty Wells, Paul Cohen, and there's more. Grandpa Jones. And many of you have heard my story that my parents told me he was my real grandpa, and I thought he was. Herbert Long. Merle Travis. Yep, cool stuff, friends. And it's all happening right here. At the Country Music Hall of Fame. And there's Jimmy. And Trey. And Buck. Good afternoon, friends. Welcome to the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum's majestic and resonant rotunda. Home to the Country Music Hall of Fame itself. My name is Kyle Young, and I'm a member of the Circle Corps. I'd like to extend a special greeting to the family and friends of Hall of Fame members who have joined us today. The Hank Snow family, including Jimmy Snow. The Owen Bradley family, including Clay and Patsy Bradley. And the Grandpa Jones family, including Melissa Jones Wall and Eloise Jones Hawkins. Please join me in waking, making them feel welcome. On the evening of Sunday, October 22, by formal right of induction, three names will join those of their colleagues here as the newest members of the hallowed Country Music Hall of Fame. The new inductees are, in alphabetical order, major label recording artist Patty Loveless, born in Kentucky, revered musician and songwriter Bob McDill, who hails from Texas, and a hit recording artist at the age of 13 who landed six number one records before she turned 18, Tanya Tucker, also born in Texas. Induction into the Country Music Hall of Fame is country music's highest honor, and we congratulate those who received that honor this year. For two weeks leading up to the investiture of new members, the museum conducts Road to the Hall of Fame. Rite of Remembrance and Salute. This year's daily ceremony honors the 149 Country Music Hall of Fame members who preceded this new class. We do this by sharing each member's biography and the order of induction starting in 1961 through 2022. Today is the third day of the Road to the Hall of Fame, Rite of Remembrance and Salute and I'm pleased to recognize the great achievements and enduring impact of Country Music Hall of Fame members inducted between 1961 and 2022. The class of 1974. Owen Bradley. A founder of Nashville's recording industry, Owen Bradley was a principal architect of the Nashville South. Born in 1915 in Westmoreland, Tennessee, he became a skilled pianist an organized Nashville dance band in the 1930s. Soon he began leading the staff orchestra of radio station WSM. After World War II, Decca Records executive Paul Cohen chose Bradley.
to assist in recording sessions with artists including Ernest Tubb and Red Foley. Bradley and his younger brother Harold were among the first to build independent national recording facilities and their studios on 16th Avenue South sparked the growth of the music world. In 1958, the elder Bradley began directing DECA's national division. He strongly influenced the pop-oriented national sound, whose broad appeal fueled the country's commercial expansion. His work includes crossover hits he produced with Patsy Cline and Brenda Lee, as well as hard country recordings by Loretta Lynn, Conway Twitty, Kitty Wells. Artists, recording engineers, and session players all respected his musical talent and unerring taste. Pee Wee King. Pee Wee brought waltzes and polkas into country music's mainstream through his recordings, broadcasts, and stage shows. His music, his appearance in singing cowboy films, and his tailored clothing all reinforced a Western theme is part of country music. Born in Milwaukee in 1914, King grew up in a working class Polish German family amid a culture that embraced a variety of music. In high school, he organized Frankie King and the King's Gestures, and he soon performed on radio station WJRN in Racine. Following moves to Louisville and Knoxville, King joined the Grand Opry in 1937. His band, the Golden West Cowboys, showcased Eddie Arnold, Minnie Pearl, and Cowboy Copas before they launched solo careers. King's group helped to make the accordion and steel guitar part of the Grand Ole Opry program. Returning to Louisville in 1947, King became a television star on local shows and network programs that brought country music to the American heartland. King's original songs include the 1950s pop hits You Belong to Me and Slowpoke and the crossover classic Tennessee Waltz. The class of 1975, Minnie Pearl. During her long career, Minnie Pearl was the undisputed queen of country comedy. She performed on the Grand Ole Opry for 50 years as a flirtatious spinster who joked about Grinder's switch, her imaginary small town home. Born in Centerville, Tennessee in 1912, aspiring actress Sarah Ophie of Collie joined a traveling theatrical troupe at age 22. In Alabama, she met an elderly woman whose amusing country talk and mannerisms inspired her to create the Mini Pearl character, who debuted on stage in 1939. A 1940 performance at a banker's convention caught the attention of WSM radio officials who invited her to make an opera guest appearance on November 30 of that year. Within a week, the station received more than 300 telegrams praising Holly's new persona, and Minnie Pearl became a permanent opera member. As seen on the Opry and on television's Hee Haw comedy series, Pearl's trademarks included in dresses, a straw hat with a $1.98 price tag, cheerful greeting. Howdy! I'm just so proud of you. <laughs> Paul Cohen. Paul Cohen is the head of Decca Records Country Department from the mid-1940s to 1958. It was central to Nashville's emergence as a recording capital. He was born in Chicago in 1908 and began working for Columbia Records in the late 1920s. Later, he managed Decca's Cincinnati branch and then moved to New York to head the label's country recording efforts. In this position, he was the first major label producer to make frequent recording trips to Nashville, initially focusing on Grand Opry stars, Red Foley, and Ernest Tubb. Cohen also held national sessions with Kitty, Webb, Kitty Wells, Webb Pierce, Brenda Lee, Patsy Klein, and Bobby Helms, all of whom signed with Decca during his tenure with the label. In 1958, Cohen switched to pop production while Owen Bradley, his longtime Nashville assistant, became Decca's principal <coughs> country producer. Cohen later ran the country division at Cap Records and formed his own Todd Records. When he died in 1970, 
Music Row offices closed for his memorial service in an unprecedented gesture of gratitude for his contributions. Kitty Wells. Kitty Wells was country music's first major female star of the post-World War II era. A native Nashvillian, she was born Muriel Deason into a musical family in 1919. With two sisters and a cousin, she worked local radio shows as the Deason Sisters. After marrying Johnny Wright in 1937, she became the so-called girl singer with her husband and Jack Anglin, Wright's partner in the duo Johnny and Jack. Wright renamed her Kitty Wells after a 19th century song with that title. In 1952, Wells was pondering retirement when she recorded an answer to Hank Thompson's The Wild Side of Life, which stressed the line, I know God made honky tonk, I didn't know God made honky tonk angels. Wells responds, it wasn't God who made honky, honky tonk angels, became the first record by a female country artist to hit number one on the music charts. All told, she had 81 charted singles, 35 of which reached the top 10. By proving that women could sell country records, Wells opened doors for Loretta Lynn, Dottie West, and other female country stars who followed. Class of 1977. Merle Travis. Merle Travis was a singer, innovative guitarist, and clever songwriter, as well as a guitar designer and a cartoonist. Born in 1917 to a Rosewood, Kentucky coal mining family, Travis explored Muhlenberg County's guitar tradition as a youth. Local finger style players like Everly and Mose Rager were early Travis heroes. After high school, he began playing professionally in Evansville, Indiana, and later worked with the Drifting Pioneers, a gospel quartet based at Cincinnati radio station WLW. A young Chet Atkins living in Georgia heard Travis and devised a similar guitar style that set his own career in motion. Moving to California in 1944, Travis cut several top 10 hits, including his truck topping original, Divorce Me, C.O.D. He crafted songs for other artists too, such as Tennessee Ernie Ford's multi-million selling 16 times, a number one crossover released in 1955. Mm -hmm. Travis also was known for designing an early form of his solid body electric guitar and for his cameo appearance in the 1953 film From Here to Eternity and his Grammy winning 1974 album, The Atkins Travis. The class of 1978, Grandpa Jones, an exuberant banjo singer and comedian, Grandpa Jones was a dedicated champion of old time music. Born Lewis Marshall Jones in 1913 in Niagara, Kentucky, he performed as a teenager on radio shows in Akron, Ohio, as the young singer of old songs. After a stint in the string band of the Lum and Abner radio series, Jones began working with Kentucky balladeer Bradley Kincaid. While performing on radio station WBZ in Boston, Kincaid gave Jones his nickname Grandpa because Jones sounded old and grouchy on their early morning programs. Running with the moniker, Jones began wearing a vaudeville costume with facial makeup and fake mustache at the age of 22. In the early 1940s, Jones teamed with the Delmore brothers and Earl Travis as the Browns Ferry Four. He moved to Nashville in 1946 and joined the Grand Opry. Through his Opry performances and his recurring role on the Hee Haw television series, Jones brought full-time songs, comic routines, and claw hammer banjo playing to millions of new listeners. Class of 1978, Hubert Long, 79, class of 1979. Hubert Long, a leading Nashville talent promoter, artist manager, and music publisher. Hubert Long was a top country music executive in the 1950s and 1960s. 
Born in Poteet, Texas in 1923, he began his career at Corpus Christi Dime Store, where he boosted the store's record sales and caught the eyes of Decca Records. Long moved to San Antonio to work for the label, and later served as publicist for Eddie Arnold at RCA Victor. In the 1950s, Long staked out the talent-rich Louisiana Hayride radio show and signed Webb Pierce and Fern Young to management. He established the Hubert Long Agency, the stable of stars among Nashville's first independent talent agencies and management companies. Long became a leader in many aspects of the music industry, including advertising, song publishing, and real estate. He was a founding member of both the Country Music Association and the Country Music Foundation. And last, Hank Snow. Hank Snow combined distinctive vocals, skillful guitar playing, and excellent songwriting to become a leading country star of the 1950s and 60s. A country traditionalist inspired and influenced by Jimmy Rogers, Snow also incorporated elements of jazz and blues, Hawaiian music, Latin rhythms, and gospel songs into his repertoire. Born in 1914 in Nova Scotia, Snow escaped an abusive stepfather working as a teenager on a fishing trip, where he entertained the crew with his songs and harmonica. In the 1930s, he performed on radio in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Between 1936 and 1949, Snow recorded for the Bluebird Label's Canadian Division. His career took off after Ernest Tubb convinced the Randall Opera to accept him, and RCA, RCA released the Snow original, I'm Moving On, which spent 44 weeks in the country charts in 1950 and 1951. In the mid-1960s, he topped the country charts with hits such as I Don't Hurt Anymore, Let Me Go Lover, and I've Been Everywhere. From 1949 to 1980, 85, Hank Snow singles reach the charts. This concludes the third day of the Road Hall of Fame right with remembrance and salute. Thank you for attending. And just before you leave, we would like to ask the family members of Owen Bradley to please stand up. Jones, right? My my parents told me that, that was my grandpa, uh -oh. and I believe him. <laughs> that he was really my grandpa. <laughs> so he had that kind of uh, impact on the world. It's pretty incredible. That was his nickname, everybody's grandpa. Yeah, and he was. He was my grandpa. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah.
And if you're new to this channel, Adventures of the Spy Guy, I have more than 600 Elvis videos. And don't forget to check out my sidekick, Globetrotting with Trey. He has over 150. And we both focus on true Elvis stories and what really happened. Like. That helps us to get more videos out there. Yes, it does.